Mr. President, I want to start this morning's um, presentation on the floor of the Senate with a question. What is the most heavily subsidized private business in America? The for-profit business that receives more federal subsidies than any other. Is it a defense contractor? No. Is it some farming operation? No. The most heavily subsidized for-profit private business in America today are for-profit colleges and universities. Why? Because the revenue that they receive from the federal government accounts for 85, 90, 95 percent or more of all the revenue they take in. How can that possibly be? How could you run a private for-profit business and have a federal subsidy of 98 percent? How is that possible? Here's how it works. Student graduates from high school. Student applies to the for-profit college and university. For-profit college and university accepts the student on the condition that the student sign over Pell Grants, federal money, and the student's federal government loan. Student signs over the Pell Grant, signs over the loan, enrolled in the school. This for-profit school now is home free. They've admitted the student, they've received all the money from the student, and the student is headed for classes. It works only if the student at the end of the day ends up with some value in their education, some experience that helps them go on to get a job to pay off their student loans. It turns out that in too many instances, for-profit colleges and universities entice these young people into signing up for classes that are worthless, end up not preparing them for any job. Now they're in a terrible fix. If they finish the course, they have a heavy, large student debt, and they end up in a position where they can't get a job and pay it off. How often does this happen? Well, think of three numbers. 9% of students graduating from high school today in America go to for-profit colleges and universities. What am I talking about? For-profit. University of Phoenix, DeVry, Rasmussen, the list goes on and on. 9% of high school students go to these schools. 20% or more of federal aid to education goes to these schools. Why? Because their tuition that they charge is so high. But here's the kicker. 35%, one out of three students in America who default on their student loans have attended these for-profit colleges and universities. So we decided under the previous administration, the Obama administration, to start asking some hard questions. How are these for-profit colleges and universities enticing these students in? What are they saying to them to bring them in to sign up for classes and for their student loans? And secondly, if the students finish their degrees at these for-profit colleges and universities, how likely are they to end up with a job that's worth something? A job that allows them to pay back their student loan? Those are legitimate questions, aren't they? If you were the parent of a child who said, Dad, I just heard about University of Phoenix. I want to go to school there. You'd obviously say, well, what are you interested in taking? Is it a good course? How much does it cost? What will be your debt when you're finished? What are your likelihood, what's your likelihood of finding a job? Those are obvious questions. And we put all those questions into something called the gainful employment rule. At the end of graduating from for-profit colleges and universities, will you be gainfully employed as a graduate student into a job that gives you a chance to pay off your student loan and to really keep the promise that that for-profit school made to you? Just weeks ago, the new Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVos, announced that our U.S. Department of Education was going to rewrite the gainful employment rule. The rule, as I said, was written by the Obama administration after years of debate, contentious debate with the industry, 
and it was designed to assure, ensure that career training programs that receive federal student aid are meeting their statutory obligation to prepare the students for a job, gainful employment. And don't forget, a lot of young people applying for college are in families that have limited college experience. Mom and dad may have never gone to college. So when you say DeVry or University of Phoenix, mom and dad may say, is it any good, son? Is it any good to your daughter? Well, the son or daughter can say, dad, the federal government will loan me, loan me the money to go there. It must be a good school. They wouldn't loan me the money to go to a place that's bad. That's a natural reaction. We are, in fact, condoning, endorsing this industry by saying, if you go to these schools, you get taxpayer-funded student loans. I don't think it's too much to ask that the programs promising to train students for specific jobs actually lead to students being able to get those jobs and repay their loans. The gainful employment rule cuts off federal student aid at programs where graduates' rate of ratio of student debt to earnings is too high during any two years of a three-year period. We look at the jobs of the graduates of the for-profit schools, we look at the income of the students, and they say, what is the likelihood that student can make their student loan repayment based on their employment? Is it, in fact, gainful employment? So prior to leaving office, the Obama Department of Education released gainful employment data for the year 2016. It showed that graduates of public undergraduate certificate programs, now that's those that go to community colleges, different colleges altogether, earn $9,000 more than those that went to for-profit colleges and universities. You know what the difference is? If you decide to go to a community college in my home state of Illinois, in my hometown of Springfield, and go to Lincoln Land Community College, a great community college like most of those in our state, you're going to get an education, a good one, and it won't cost you much. And let me give you the kicker. All of your hours can be transferred to upper level colleges and universities. But if you make a bad decision and go to a for-profit college, different things happen. You end up with a real debt for that first year out of high school. And guess what? Virtually none of the credit hours that you take at that for-profit school can be transferred to any other college or university. That's the reality of what students face. Of the programs that saddle students with too much debt compared to the income that students receive after the program, listen to this. When we looked at all of the student debt and all of the jobs of all of the graduates across the United States, it turns out that 98% of the students who couldn't pay off their student loans after graduating went to for-profit colleges and universities. That was the 2016 analysis. That's what led to the gainful employment rule. This is cruel. To take a young person who is doing just what they were told to do, go to college, get a degree, don't quit with high school, saddle them with debt, make an empty promise about what's going to happen after they graduate, and then they find themselves in a job they can't pay off their student loan. Let me give you a specific example so you can really understand what we've run into. The digital photography program at the Illinois Institute of Art in Schaumburg, Illinois. Now let me quickly add, the folks who put this together were pretty smart. We have an outstanding college in Chicago called the Art Institute of Illinois. My daughter graduated from there. However, this bunch, the for-profit group, decides to call their operation the Illinois Institute of Art instead of the Art Institute of Chicago. They're owned by a for-profit giant, the Education Management Corporation. They failed the gainful employment rule in the year 2016. Listen to what they wrote on their website for students who wanted to enroll. Quote, there's a market for people who constantly find innovative ways to fill the world with their ideas, impressions, and insights. And digital photography can help you make a positive impression when you're ready to match your talents against the competition. From the very start, 
will guide your development, creatively and technically. It's a step-by-step -step process that's all about preparing you for a future when you can do what you love. That's what's on the website for the high school student who likes the idea of majoring in digital photography in the, at the Illinois Institute of Art in Schoenberg. Boy, doesn't it sound good. So let's contrast that with what the gainful employment rule found about that particular program. Get ready. You know what the total cost of the digital photography course was at the Illinois Institute of Art, the for-profit school? Total cost, tuition, fees, books, and supplies to prepare you to be a digital photographer? $88,000. $88,000. Gets better. That's if you live off campus. Want to live on campus? The company helps you find an apartment nearby. Over the four years, an additional $56,000. Let's do the quick math here. $144,000 in debt. Finishing four years majoring in digital photography at the Illinois Institute of Art. How many students have to borrow money to do that? 84% of the students who went to that school and took digital photography had to borrow the money, 84%. And guess what the typical graduate of the Illinois Institute of Art in Schaumburg, Illinois, in the digital photography course, earns after leaving the program? Remember that promise on their website? How much do they earn? Average? $20,493, $20,493. Quick calculation, what if I'm being paid the minimum wage in America? In Illinois, it's $9.25 an hour. Well, I'd be making right around $18,500 a year in a minimum wage job. I've gone to the Illinois Institute of Art in Schaumburg to take the digital photography course, and instead of making $18,500 a year, I'm making $20,493. That's almost $2,000 more a year. Oh, I forgot. I forgot $144,000 in debt that I also have. How many years, let's do the math, how many years an additional $2,000 to pay off 144,000, only 72 years, and you'd be able to pay off your student debt. What a ripoff. These people ought to be ashamed of themselves. And we ought to be ashamed of ourselves that we are supporting this kind of fraudulent activity at the expense of students who are just trying to get a better education. That's why we wrote this gainful employment rule. To say to the Illinois Institute of Art and those just like them, stop it. Stop fleecing these kids. Stop burying them in debt. And incidentally, many times, parents and even grandparents sign on for that debt too. And you know something else you ought to, ought to remember? Of all the debts that you can incur in life, there are only a handful of them that can never be discharged in bankruptcy. Student loans would happen to be in that category. You know what that means? No matter how bad it gets, and it could get to the point where you are, have no income whatsoever, no matter how bad it gets, you can't go to the courts and say, please, turn me free. Discharge this debt in bankruptcy. Give me a chance to start all over again. You can do it with your home mortgage. You can do it with an auto loan. You can do it if you have a loan for a boat, but not with student loans. It's with you for a lifetime. We've had cases where grandma decided to help her granddaughter by co-signing the note at one of these miserable schools Daughter couldn't pay back the student loan. They went after grandma's social security payments. That's what this is all about. That's how serious this can become. There's no way students leaving that digital photography program at this for-profit college in Schaumburg will ever repay their loans making that money. Under the gainful employment rule, if the Illinois Institute of Art doesn't change its program or lower its price or help its students get better jobs, We'd stop providing student loans to the students who are engaged in that program. We're not going to be complicit. We shouldn't be in this fraud. 
The rule requires schools to post their gainful employment data online using a new easy to read disclosure so that students can read, well, what happened to students who took the digital photography course? Did they get jobs? How much did they earn? That's one of the, also one of the requirements on the gainful employment rule. It requires schools to provide warnings to students in advertising and marketing materials about failing programs so they know before they sign up, they know before they go in debt. Think about what these disclosures and warnings might have meant to Amy Schneider from Hoffman Estates in Illinois. Amy went to this notorious art institute, the Illinois Institute of Art, the Schaumburg Digital Photography Program from 2007 to 2010. She wrote me a letter, told me her story. Amy says she moved out of her parents' house at age 19 and after a few years realized she couldn't have the life she wanted with the job she was working. She was getting 50 cents an hour raises every other year. She says, I wanted to pursue a career and I really was serious. I was passionate about it. She visited this Illinois Institute of Art campus in Schaumburg. I went into the school, she wrote me, and they fed me all these success stories. They told me that they had an excellent placement program. What do you think would have happened if they'd have told Amy that at the end of the day, she would have been making slightly more than minimum wage after taking all these courses and incurring all this debt? What if they'd been required to tell Amy that employers wouldn't accept her degree and she'd never pay off her student loan? Well, Amy and tens of thousands of students like her across the country would have been spared from a hardship that can change their lives. Amy says her time at the Institute of Art, quote, ended up ruining my life. In her 20s, she made a decision to go to college, got so deeply in debt and can't pay it back. The program culminated in a portfolio show where the students displayed their best work. Do you know how many employers, after Amy finished the course, and did her display. Do you know how many employers showed up for Amy's class portfolio show at the Illinois Institute of Art? None, not one. Amy and her family who took out the loans to help her now hold more than $100,000 in student loan debt from her time at the Illinois Institute of Art. She stuck with a degree which, as she said, she considered a joke. Using the questionable legal authority which she claims she has, the new Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVos, has decided to delay for a year the requirement that schools warn students like Amy about these failing programs. Delayed it for a year. That's another year that for-profit education companies will be able to hide the truth about their miserable results. It means students are going to be defrauded because Education Secretary Betsy DeVos has decided to let it happen. It means more students like Amy and more federal dollars in the pockets of these greedy for-profit college executives. You wouldn't believe what these people pay themselves who head up these for-profit colleges and universities. Take the most successful basketball coach in the United States of America at the uh, college level. Take the most successful football coach in a state like Alabama. Take a look at what they get paid, and I'm sure in Alabama they'd pay them even more if they could. And then compare it to what these CEOs pay themselves off of these poor students. It's disgraceful. For the sake of the students and taxpayers who immediately would benefit from real warnings, it's time for us in Congress to speak up. We also know that Secretary DeVos intends to eventually rewrite the gainful employment rule in what she called, quote, a regulatory reset. What does that mean? We hear a lot of speeches on the floor about too much government regulation. If you were Amy Schneider or his, her, her parents, would you consider a disclosure to students about the real results of their education? A disclosure to students about the debt they're going to incur and the income they're likely to earn over regulation by the federal government? We're putting a lot of money on the line. We gave $100,000 at least in federal taxpayers' dollars to Amy to go to school, but she got a promise to pay it back. If she defaults, that money isn't paid back into the Treasury. For the good of the taxpayers, as well as for her family, we should have some basic regulations, some basic accountability. Secretary DeVos says the rule is unfair and arbitrary. Even the Department of Education Inspector General agreed with the assertion that it was a good rule. 
in terms of protecting kids and protecting taxpayers. I'm proud to say the rule is supported by many state attorney general, attorneys general, including Lisa Madigan in my home state of Illinois, veterans groups and student advocates. Secretary DeVos said the gainful employer rule has been, quote, repeatedly overturned by the courts. Wrong. In effect, since it went into effect in 2015, every federal court it's been in front of has upheld the underlying rule. The secretary is just plain wrong. It's time for Secretary DeVos and the Trump administration to stop aiding and abetting for-profit colleges that defraud students and build taxpayers. 